I'd like to move to the highlights, the thicker opaque paint in the heart itself. So let me see. First, I see two kind of interesting ones up there. I'm going to try mixing them first. Let's see if I can find a smaller flat because those are teeny tiny little shapes. And I'm going to go for that wedge shape first. It's like a little puddle of white with some cat orange light in it. Okay, here we go. Look at a little bit closer and brace, because this is a kind of got to be accurate. Okay, and then there's one right next to it. It's funny, when you're painting something shiny, it's these last highlight steps that really make the thing look shiny. It's hard to wait for them, but exciting when we finally get there, huh? Okay. Whoopsie. I overdid that one. Pull out a little of it. Okay. So you know that thing that you did uh, that I called scrubbing when we were doing glazes? It, it's such a harsh thing that you almost hear that scrubbing sound. Um, do not do this when you get to the thicker, lighter colors. If you scrub your thicker, lighter colors in, they become weak and they become mixed with what's underneath. So when it comes to thick paint, you lay in the stroke and then you stop, come back, load up the brush again. Don't scrub it in. When we're working with thick paint, we call that licking, and it's a big problem. Makes all your light and dark colors mix together, mix together to form kind of a middle value that has not half as much character as each of those colors had before you mixed them together. So light touch. Put the stroke down, get some more paint, scoop it up like a little shovel. You need great quantities of paint compared to what you had before. Blend judiciously. Usually you have to blend much less than you think, especially for this application of the thick values. Don't blend it. Leave it, step back, and just soften edges slightly to reflect the reference. That's still not quite right shape-wise. There we go. Okay. Next, I think I have to deal with this very interesting but very difficult pinkish white that you see back there where the heart sets against the background. I think to do that, I'm going to go back and clean out any wet glazes I may already have there because I don't want them to interfere with the color I'm going to put on. Just pull them out with a Q-tip. There they are. Notice how I'm getting more careful. At the beginning, the colors and marks I was making were more to give us something to paint against, a background. Now I'm actually painting the final strokes that will show, so I got to be a little more careful. Okay. Just trying to... Okay, so now I'm going to try to mix that pink. 
Is it opaque? It has to be because it has so damn much white in it, but it's still pink. So I'm having that dilemma. I'm going to try to put it in, but if it doesn't work, we'll try something else. So the bluish, the cool red that we have, the kind of pink that I'm seeing there now in that highlight, is a base of quinacridone red with just a little of the white. Okay, scoop up, color check. Ooh, I'm in the neighborhood. Here we go. Okay, looks like there's really strong red right by that highlight. So I'm gonna come back. See if I can't glaze that in. Right around that big white opaque I just put in. Looks like glaze there. 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 Come back. there. Notice how much you have to go back. Basically every stroke you have to go back and refill your brush. Oops. Something I can fix with a Q-tip there. Right there. Okay, it's even stronger red down there. Now I'm laying an opaque cadmium red uh, light right over top of my dry red glaze, just trying to kick up the color just ever so slightly more there. Okay, right inside of this one is another little highlight. You'll see it if you look at your reference closely. I think I'm gonna coming back in here with some opaque orange red just to make that edge a little cleaner. Okay. Try to put that really strong white highlight inside of that smaller highlight, larger highlight, excuse me. It's hard to talk and paint at the same time because it's usually, I think it's using different parts of the brain at the same time. Okay, it's almost straight white. Rarely is a highlight straight white, but in this case, it almost looks like it is. I'll put in straight white, and it'll blend a little bit with what's underneath. So the, wet, the paint underneath is thick and very wet, so this is the thickest paint I can possibly put on on top of this. If this won't stick, then my only option is to scrape down the canvas to thin paint again or to wait for it to dry. Fortunately, I was able to get, oops, <laughs> look what I did. I, I had laid the mark in and I licked. I went back and put it in again, but you can see it did mix with the uh, pink paint underneath and kind of screwed up my highlights. So I'm gonna give myself another try, get that dirty white off, load it up, and this time, no licking. Lay it in. It's not even a stroke. It's just laying the brush down and pulling it back. Oh, and I'm not going to let myself touch it again. Okay. I see this highlight that I made before is maybe has a soft edge. Go ahead and put that in. Looks like I need to clean up what's happening right there. Go. Oops. Just 
just trim that, something like that. And it looks like there is a slightly darker bluish white around the edge of that silver thing. That's what I'm gonna put in next. Oh, it's darker than that. I'm going to have to come back in here with a few little glazes because it looks like I missed some small details up there, but catch them later. Okay, ready to move on. We're getting close. Why don't I take a minute now and fill up the rest of the background? I was said I thought the top looked more warm and the bottom looked like a cooler purple. So I'm going to mix a new puddle of white. Ooh, warm it up a bit. I think yellow's fine. Add some more white. Test it. Maybe a little grayer than what I have. So I'm going to try and kill the intensity of that color by adding just a tiny bit of coolness. There, that looks better. Check. There we go. Oh my goodness, that's way too dark, isn't it? So I'll just come back with a lighter color right there. Just try to go over it. don't have to systematically fill in the whole thing you know leave some of that red showing through if you feel like it helps you and uh, I think it gets a little darker down there than I have indicated so I'm just going to take a slightly darker purple down here yeah that's better like that sort of remember what I said oil paints a great medium for people that make a lot of mistakes I love that about it Okay, come back, smooth it, blend it where you need to. There, now it looks a little bit more like the shadow is part of the table instead of some odd appendage to the heart. I think right where the heart meets the, the shadow, it's a little darker than I have it. Something I'm not quite getting the pop I, I want. I'm close. I feel really close, but what? Think. Take a big old wad of quinacridone red. Right there, something 
changes. This, I think, is too dark. Maybe that's the issue. Yeah, as you can see, this is the time to start fussing around and getting everything in there that you think is missing. But uh, try not to take that step too many because as we're fine-tuning things, we can also lose the original freshness. And it's easy to blend things too much, so you also lose your brushwork. And you got to watch the transparencies, too. You don't want to lose them. It's like juggling a bunch of balls in the air at the same time. But you'll get the hang of it. Okay, let's see. Looks like, just feel like something's going on there, like that edge is too sharp. I hope you remember to close one eye and squint the other. That's still how I decide what to leave in and what to leave out. Right now, I'm looking, closing one eye and squinting the other, and I was looking over here at the silver part. I think that's the part that could use a little bit more of my attention. Don't want to get too fussy. Remember, we cannot put every single detail there is in. To close one eye, squint the other, and figure out which are so important that we can't leave them out. Okay. Few little white, strong highlights in there, and I think we might call it a day, friends. Okay. When doing these highlights, make sure your brush is clean or it will not be a highlight. Okay. Quit fussing, put it in. Please note my white. When your white looks like that, it means you should add clean. Even though there's still wet paint left there, it's wet paint that does me no good at all because it's been affected by the dirty brush that went into it. So getting some fresh. I have to be very conscious of making this paint about as thick as I can get it because underneath this highlight is wet paint, in fact, wet opaque paint. So let's see if it's still sticking. Yeah, it's sticking fine. Okay, loading up to do another one. Soften that black just a tiny bit. This one, too.
Okay, that's it. A heart for your Valentine. I hope you enjoyed it. And let's try something else now. Thank you.